Do you name the robots ever? <laughs> Honestly, like we're engineers, and so they have three-letter acronyms. All of them. This is the MHR. So, I guess very cold, but that's what we do. We were born within three days of each other. Yes in the same city. But we never met until MIT. And now you run a pharmaceutical robotics company together. together. Yep. <laughs> I'm Fred. I'm Aisha. And we're making robots to manufacture next generation drugs. Traditionally, small molecule, standardized drugs are created based on large clinical trials to treat the same problems for a large group of people. A good metaphor I think about in terms of individualized versus uh, standardized medicine is imagine if everybody had to buy the same phone installing only one app. Uh, that would be very, very limiting and clearly not follow the diversity of people and their, their needs. Individualized drugs tailor medicine to specific patients, delivering complex doses in a polypill format. The formulation of these drugs are what multiplies robots currently specialize in. Prescriptions for drugs for heart disease are so complicated and the dosage is not exact, so they also have side effects. And these causes actually a third of patients to not take their drugs. We imagine a future where our robots are deployed at such scale that each one of these patients can receive a single pill that contains all of their drugs. Then there's the holy grail of modern medicines, biologic therapies like the mRNA COVID vaccines or more specialized cell therapies. This is the most advanced way to treat patients, but it's not accessible. Multiply's next series of robots are built to solve this problem. Imagine that, you know, you take a blood sample and you separate the immune cells, your immune cells, and then you modify them, and then you have them grow, and then you infuse them back. Basically, you're giving their own immune system, but better. More powerful to attack the disease they are suffering from. Right now, there is a giant focus on like cell therapies because they can actually treat cancer and only a small number of patients can have access to those because they are pretty expensive to manufacture and time consuming. It's basically almost like an artisan craft. Just that the artisans are typically MD, PhDs, but it's entirely manual. A lot of variability and inconsistency sometimes because depending on the operator, on the day, on the process, at the end you're going to have different fields of cells. Having a system that does it in a very robust, reliable way, that's basically what's needed. This is our capsule robotic cluster. Uh, it's a modular system, so every module does a different specialized tasks. Yeah, you can actually deliver powder within your capsule. You can check, for instance, if the weight deliver of each power is within the range. You can work with mini tablets to make your product individualized to like each specific patient needs. All of these modules, they are flexible and swappable. They are all linked in the center by a robotic arm on a rail. You can move products from any module to any other module, and that gives it uh, flexibility. We built this robot to have a pretty simple system where the scientist can just drag and drop the recipe he would like to do, and the robot takes care of manufacturing with the research scientists just overseeing the process. So this is a demo. Normally people would be in full clean room bunny suits, totally suited up. Since we're not, don't have any active drugs today, I am fine to just be in my regular clothing. And then we can just confirm that nobody is in and get started. So this is just a three tray plan. So a pretty simple plan. When it gets to 50 trays, it's just impossible. At the end of process creation, you just load the plan, you hit play, and then the robot goes. So actually we didn't take the Silicon Valley approach to move fast and break things to build our robots. We took our time to design and develop this system in a safe way. Switching between the academia and like a startup is pretty different in terms of mindset because like working like an academic person, you just investigate for the purpose of investigating. While here you need to have a target and to achieve that target. There's very few companies or projects in the world that need to combine two completely different. Yeah, yeah. like how do you how do you deal with that? Uh, I, I think we, you need to be very humble, basically. So as an engineer, I need to know I'm not a pharma expert, and so you can't walk in the room and tell pharma scientists, "Oh, you're gonna change what you're doing," because they're not gonna do that. Exactly, so they're not right. Uh, and at the same time, from the point of view of Alice, she's been able to really adapt her language so engineers can understand it. 
And sometimes you need to try something different for you just to see another's perspective and then learn from that. And slowly, slowly, this small turn becomes bigger and you can adapt. Yeah, you can only do this if people are really believing in what, in what we're doing and that is good. Yeah, and there's commitment and resilience exactly. also. The robots must improve access to these drugs. None of us really wants to build a machine that can then be used to jack up price and reduce availability. So this part of how the robots are used, not just how advanced they are, I think it's very important for everybody. So this stuff, making this stuff is hard and it's hard work from like all of us. And it's is what like is the team following, I guess. Our big milestones in the next few months are deploying the next generation capsule robots and the next generation cell therapy robots. The capsule robots actually have already been successfully deployed in a GMP facility, which means it's FDA compliant. Uh, to my knowledge, there is no precedent of this level of robotic technology deployed in a GMP FDA compliant facility. And these robots are performing flawlessly, manufacturing individualized drugs in a way that would be impossible for human operators. Thank you for watching the third episode of S3. This one was a blast to film. I don't know if the video gets across just how cool these robots are, but like one module was moving while the main robotic arm was moving and it was amazing. I truly believe that what Multiply Labs is building is going to revolutionize and democratize the way we do polypills and just make cellular therapies production accessible, which is super exciting. Thank you to Fred and Alice for coming out on a Saturday and filming this. Uh, that was awesome. Exciting news. Uh, I'm traveling for the first time for S3 to Los Angeles next weekend to film a very exciting company. So if you're an LA based company, I have two slots available to film still. Uh, for future episodes of S3 this next weekend, August 10th to the 13th. So if you're based in LA or know someone else. Also, we have a blog and it's getting better every week. There's cool clips, quotes, and funny stories that didn't quite make the cut that are in the blog and give you the deep dive on the startups we feature on S3. Thank you again for watching. Keep on building the future. And I'll see you next week when we make things float. Oh yeah.